In grade school science class, you might have been introduced to something called a phase diagram. It's a 2D plot that shows at what pressures and temperatures a material transforms between solid, liquid, and gas phases. Cross this line in pressure or temperature, and the liquid boils into a gas or the gas condenses back into a liquid. Similarly, these lines denote the solid-liquid transition, melting or freezing, and the solid-gas transition, sublimation or frosting. This point where the three lines meet is the triple point, where all three phases can exist simultaneously in equilibrium. And this point is the critical point, where the difference between the liquid and gas phases disappear. Above this temperature and pressure, there are no separate liquid and gas phases, just a single supercritical fluid phase. Supercritical fluids are used for extracting caffeine from coffee, dry cleaning clothes, and some special sample preparation techniques. But if the critical point seems weird to you, don't worry, you're not alone. Why does the transition line just... end? Isn't that weird? Physical boundaries don't just stop in mid-air like that, do they? It's almost like trying to draw a square with only three lines. Well, the answer is, the transition line doesn't actually end at the critical point. You see, the phase diagram we're so used to seeing is the pressure-temperature diagram, or PT diagram, which is only a 2D projection of the full 3D diagram, the PVT diagram, pressure, temperature, and specific volume. Looking at the 3D phase surface, it becomes clear that the critical point is not the end of a line, but the apex of a curve. Here's another schematic representation of the PVT phase surface with some features exaggerated for visibility. To explain, I want to quickly review another thing that may have been shoved in your face in grade school science, the ideal gas law. PV equals nRT, where P is pressure, V is volume, T is temperature, N is the number of gas molecules in units of moles, and R is the gas constant, or Boltzmann's constant times Avogadro's number. Now, we're going to rewrite the equation just a bit and divide volume by N to get the volume per mole of gas, otherwise known as the molar volume Vm. The important thing to understand is that the molar volume is basically the inverse of density, amount of volume per unit of matter instead of amount of matter per unit of volume. And there they are. These three parameters, pressure, density, and temperature, fully describe the physical state of any single component material. The ideal gas law explicitly spells out the relationship between them for the gas phase. But similar relationships, more generally called equations of state, exist for the solid and liquid phases as well. From here on, I'm going to be a bit sloppy with language and use terms like density, specific volume, and molar volume interchangeably, because they are all interchangeable with a very minor bit of math. When looking at the 2D PT phase diagram, we implicitly know that there is a huge jump in density when a gas condenses into a liquid. And there's also a small change in density when a liquid freezes into a solid. The 3D PVT diagram shows those changes in density explicitly. To help explain what we're looking at, let's focus on a different 2D projection, the density temperature phase diagram, or VT phase diagram. This space is the solid phase, this is the liquid phase, here is the gas, and at the apex of the liquid gas curve is the critical point, with these dashed lines marking the critical temperature and pressure. Suppose we start here, in the gas phase, and start traveling upwards on the VT diagram. Physically, you can imagine some volume of gas in a rigid container with a piston that we start to push down, shrinking the volume and compressing the gas. Another caveat is that we do this slowly enough that the apparatus stays at a constant temperature the entire time. The gas becomes denser and the pressure increases until we hit the transition line, where the gas begins to condense into a liquid. This is represented as the system jumping across the density gap, so to speak, and simultaneously coexisting on two spots on the VT diagram, one spot representing the gas phase and the other spot representing the liquid phase. Here, if we push the piston down further, the pressure in the container remains constant, what you might call the quote-unquote average density of the material in the chamber, represented by the black X, continues to increase, but the actual densities of the liquid and gas phases don't change. More gas just condenses into liquid. Moving up and down in this gap changes the balance of how much material is liquid or vapor. These white areas on the diagram, they're called two-phase regions, and it's important to think of these areas as actual voids or gaps. In these areas, the material is not stable as a single phase at that particular density. Such a state quickly separates into two phases of different densities given by the edges of the gap. 
As we continue to push down the piston, all of the gas eventually gets compressed into a liquid. If we keep going, we cross the liquid phase and reach another jump in density, where the liquid starts coalescing into bits of solid. In reality, this liquid-solid gap is very small, but it's exaggerated here for visibility. Let's do another example. Moving straight left on the VT diagram means cooling the material, but now you have to imagine that it's trapped in a rigid container of a fixed volume. It is not allowed to expand or shrink freely, and the average density remains constant. So what happens now when we hit the transition line? Well, liquid does start to condense, but this time things are a bit more complicated. As we continue to decrease the temperature, these two points, representing the densities of coexisting gas and liquid phases, trace the borders of the gap. The density of the gas decreases, the density of the liquid increases, and the relative amounts of the two phases changes continuously until we cross the triple point where almost all of the liquid freezes solid. From here on, it's only gas and solid coexisting in the chamber. So what does the 3D PVT phase diagram tell us about the critical point? First, in order to construct a proper critical point demonstration like you might have seen in other videos, you need a rigid container of a fixed volume to which you add an exact mass of material. That way, you're locked into an exact average density or specific volume and are guaranteed to move up this line on the VT phase diagram through the critical point. As you heat up the chamber from subcritical temperatures, the liquid phase gradually gets less dense while the gas phase gets more dense. As you approach the critical point, the difference in density between gas and liquid decreases continuously towards zero. In practice, the surface of the liquid begins to appear very wavy, as now that the densities of the two phases are so close, it's harder for gravity to smooth out ripples. Then the interface gets indistinctly fuzzy, then it just disappears. When you go the other way and cool down the supercritical fluid, the moment it crosses the critical point, the entire contents of the chamber immediately and spontaneously separate into liquid and gas phases. Visually, this looks like the whole chamber suddenly turning into a fog in a phenomenon called critical point opalescence. The transition through the critical point is rather special. It's not a typical phase transition you're used to, like freezing, boiling, or sublimation. Speaking very briefly, common transitions like freezing or boiling are known as first-order transitions, characterized by discontinuities in first-order state variables. The critical point transition is a second-order transition, characterized by discontinuities in second-order state variables. I know, I know, blah blah blah, technical jargon. Maybe a more in-depth explanation of the two types of phase transitions will be another video. Hopefully now you have a better idea of what critical point behavior looks like and how the 3D phase diagram helps you understand and predict phase transformation behavior. In the description, I put links to some other videos talking about phase transformations and showing critical point demos that I recommend you go and watch, including a very recent one by PBS Spacetime that did spur me to put this video of mine out sooner. PBS Spacetime is great, but I will quibble with one minor point. They describe the supercritical region of the phase diagram with the term here be dragons, in reference to some of the tongue-in-cheek terms that ancient mapmakers used to label terra incognita, or lands unknown and unexplored. The supercritical phase is actually fairly well known and understood. No, no, no. Where our theories and equations tend to fail badly are not in the open phase spaces, but at the transition lines. Of course, dragons are magical creatures that reside in the liminal spaces between worlds, along the phase boundaries. There be the dragons. That is to say, this is only part one. The story of the critical point actually goes much, much deeper. Following the discovery of the critical point by Charles Cagnard de la Tour, an important experimental work by Thomas Andrews, the first theoretical explanation of the supercritical transition put forth by Johannes Dietrich van der Waals was an important stepping stone towards a better understanding of fundamental molecular forces, including some of the first estimates of the size of molecules and the postulation of the existence of what is now known as the van der Waals force. That will be covered in part two when we discuss the van der Waals equation of state. If you aren't completely driven off by the sound of my voice by now and are interested in a couple side notes and one mildly unhinged rant, then stick around a bit for a couple extra credit topics. Otherwise, stay well, and thank you very much for listening. Alright, now that all the well-adjusted normal people are gone, let's geek out and do some extra credit work. So the diagrams that I've showed so far are for materials where the solid is more dense than the liquid. 
Water is different. Water ice is less dense than liquid water. Water expands when it freezes, which is why frozen pipes burst in the winter and ice floats on water. So the water phase diagram looks like this. Yeah, go ahead and try to wrap your head around that one. Water is weird. Let's say you're building your own critical point demonstration chamber. Good for you. I mentioned that if you want to traverse exactly through the critical point, not just make a supercritical fluid, you need to fill a rigid chamber with an exact amount of material. What does it look like if you overfill or underfill the chamber? Well, you see the liquid gas interface move up or down until a single phase fills the entire chamber, just before the critical temperature is reached. You still get a supercritical fluid if you go above the critical temperature and pressure, but you don't quite get a true critical point transition. A quick note on the triple point. We now see on the 3D PVT diagram that the triple point is represented as a line. And yes, triple line is valid terminology. What I definitely don't want you to do is to talk back to your teachers or comment on other videos in a smug, pedantic way saying, well, actually, you're wrong. It's not a triple point. It's a triple line. That would be an example of acting smart by memorizing and reciting meaningless trivia without actually becoming smart by spending time to understand the context and nuance. First, remember that I said that these areas should be considered literal gaps or voids in the diagram because the material is not stable as a single phase at that density, temperature, and pressure. On the triple line, the material is only stable at three points, representing the gas, liquid, and solid phases. So the right name really is triple points, plural! Except that's also not quite true. Within these forbidden zones are regions adjacent to the transition lines that are metastable meaning that there are points where the material can be kinetically trapped and can briefly exist as a single phase at that forbidden density. On the triple line, those metastable regions might appear as short line segments around the stable points. This fact starts to touch on the important difference between equilibrium, which is the final destination, and kinetics, which is what actually happens along the way. Most phase diagrams only show you equilibrium. So really, it's triple line segments! Look, triple point is fine. Triple state is fine. Triple line is also fine. Saying triple points or triple line segments does not mean you're smart. It just means you deliberately adopt contrarian views to internally justify your lack of friends, regardless of whether or not those views are actually correct. If you utter such phrases in my presence, I will award you zero points and will remind you that you have no friends not because you're smart, but because you're an